Let's travel back in time to the year 2006. It's the week after Christmas. You just got LEGO Star Wars 2 and have been playing it non-stop on your old, double-cheeked up Dell computer. In each level, there are these treasures called mini-kits that are hidden throughout, and you must figure out how to obtain them. Unfortunately, to collect all the mini-kits, you had to solve puzzles that were seemingly designed by Einstein himself. I spent an insane amount of hours on this game as a kid trying to get these mini-kits, and I loved every minute of it. Sounds like a lot of... Hoopla! It sounds like a lot Hoopla! of... Hoopla! Sounds like a... Hoopla! Hoopla! Sounds like a lot of hoopla to make over a little... Mini kit. Right? <laughs> Wrong! I mean, finding all ten in the level gave you a golden brick. Anyway, with the release of LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, I wanted to see if I could make a real, functioning mini kit. Uh, to clarify, I wanted the mini kit to be used as an actual container and for the lights to blink. I haven't quite figured out my anti-gravity circuit yet, so sadly I couldn't get it to levitate like they usually do. So the first thing I did was build a mini kit out of LEGO so that I could get measurements in order to model it. Uh, I decided to arbitrarily scale a mini kit up to be about 8 inches tall and have the main canister 5 inches wide. Uh, as I was modeling the mini kit, I made the inside of the canister hollow and ran small holes through the walls of each part so I could hide the wires that ran to the lights. The, the very bottom of the mini kit will have a switch and that will turn on the lights and then it will have a 9 volt battery stored inside. Now that the modeling was done, I needed to work on the lights. I knew a couple of 555 timers would work to alternatively blink the lights and after reading their respective data sheet, I had a theoretically working circuit. Now I just needed to launch LEGO Star Wars 2 to figure out how quickly the mini kits blinked. How hard could that be? Oh, here we go. Wait. Do they not blink? Are you kidding me? A quick Google search confirmed my worst fears. Distraught, I spent a couple hours learning about the ailment known as false memory and how I foolishly became its most recent victim. I don't remember much of it since I was just skimming, although it did mention something about a mandolin, which I thought was pretty weird. But I digress. I searched for minikit footage from the third LEGO Star Wars game, and thankfully, those actually blinked. Using an extremely precise technique, I was able to determine each light blinked about twice per second, and the light circuit was changed accordingly. With the 3D model and circuit complete, it was time to print this bad boy. Okay, so the first thing I do with this new print is I go ahead and break that tab. Wonderful. After several days of printing and reprinting, all 16 pieces were ready to be assembled. I now only had to solder the circuit and put it all together, which was easier said than done. All right, just wired up this monstrosity. Oh yeah, let's uh, I haven't turned this on yet. Let's see if it works. Yeah, that's hot. Oh, hey, oh. Whoever designed this thing is a moron. Uh, this absolutely sucks. Even though it did suck putting it together, I persevered through all my design flaws, and I gotta say, I think it turned out pretty good. Legos go. So it actually can be used as a container. So you can see I keep my net worth in there and uh, lid does just screw on. So it's perfect. The only thing I don't like about it is I couldn't get the bottom battery cover to fit. So it looks kind of ugly, but I guess nobody's really going to see it. It's on the bottom, whatever. Well, there it is. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you 
making it to the end of the video. This is my first ever video uh, I've made or tried to make. Um, so please let me know what you think. Helpful feedback would be awesome. And uh, let me know if you want to see more.